Welcome back to another video. The first episode of Story which shows Naruto and Sasuke losing blood and chakra after their final battle at the Valley of the End. The rivals die before Aid arrives, and the Biju decide to utilize one last gift from their father to offer Naruto and themselves another chance to make things right. Please hit that like button and that subscribe button. Let's jump right in. So this is what it's come to, just me. A man sat in solitary, the quietness of a battlefield all around him. A once beautiful place, full of dead bodies, some of them being his closest friends, now surrounded him. I'm sorry I couldn't save you my old friend. He paused for a second a single tear fell as he sat on the ground. Dust flew through the air as he made a fist clenching his hands together trying to hold back more tears from knew there was no more reason to hold back the pain and let the tears fall freely. The man knew there was no one there to talk to, but still he spoke, I really wish I could have done something sooner Sasuke. The ninja's clothes were tattered and destroyed, a hat that belonged only to the Hokage resting at his feet, burned but not completely destroyed. If only there was something I may have been able to do to stop you from going to that bastard Orochimaru and becoming even worse. I never wanted to admit it, but you were truly evil. What you did today was proof of that. I hoped after we had finished off Kagaya something had changed. Even after we fought at that damned valley, you seemed better. You started to smile, help the village, you and Sakura had a fucking kid. But this. Killing our comrades. Destroying our village and everyone inside it, he paused as his voice broke off. The war was hard enough as it was without you having to have done this. I was wrong about you. You were the evil person everyone said you were I just wished I had listened. But this. Naruto stopped choking on his words as his tenant listened quietly not saying anything just yet. He wanted the boy to be able to come to terms on his own. I'm sorry it had to come to this, but what you have done is unforgivable. I thought everything was finally okay. The Kages let you go as you had helped us in the war by defeating Madara and Abito and then Kagaya. We gave you the freedom to roam the world as you wanted and do as you wish, but if I knew you were going to do this, I would have never let any of this happen. Naruto stopped as he finally started to cry fully, letting out all of his anger and frustration and sadness, not holding it back anymore, giving into the rawest of emotions. After a few moments, he got himself together before walking over to do the one thing he never wished to do. Bury his family. After making said graves, he placed his lovely Hinata inside of it, trying not to cry as he did so. After he did, he made a clone to fill it in as he moved on to the next smaller grave, which he then put his son in before breaking down. His only child, Baruto, not even two years old. He couldn't stay strong as he did this. Kurama got sad at this also having grown attached to his peaceful life. Kurama finally spoke up, Naruto, there is something I need to tell you. It's dangerous though and risky the old beast let on, catching the man's attention quickly as he wiped away his tears listening. There is a very old jutsu I know that can send you back in time. But there can be drawbacks. Kurama said with a tired voice from the long battle he just had with his friend taking down the last Uchiha. Really Naruto said with a half-shocked half-happy face. Wait what can happen? He asked needing to know. Well, for one, if we overshoot it and go too far back, you won't remember anything. But if we can go back within your lifetime, you will remember everything from the future, and so will I. But no one else will remember what happened to them. They'll act like nothing happened. It's just another day. Also, you won't be able to use Sage Mode anymore because you won't have the Toad contract unless you had already met Jiraiya, but it would be too late to save Sasuke by then. He said as Naruto listened to every detail trying to understand all the pros and cons okay, but what about me then? I'll be able to know everything, but we'll have to relearn it? He asked remembering the horrors of tree climbing. Unfortunately, if we go that far back then, yes. But if we can get you around the time or after your first big mission, then you might be safe. But hey, it's never too late to relearn chakra control, but really that's the least of your problems. He said, Damn, that means I'll probably have to go through puberty again, Naruto said, making a crappy pun before continuing. But anyways, what you're saying, if we get this right, I'll wake up randomly some point in my past. Unless we overshoot this, then I'll grow up not remembering anything and the same thing will happen. 
he said half asking half summing it up. Yeah, that's about it. But you'll also automatically have the instinct of a shinobi that's been through the worst, which means you'll probably never lose. But then again, you'll have to relearn your taijutsu due to not having that muscle memory. He said to his friend, Well, it's not like I have a choice, let's do this. Naruto said to Kurama, We can't just yet, my chakra is still too low, you took all I could give you besides the chakra I need to live, but in a few days, we should be good, so in the meantime, get ready to go back in time. And also, this is a one-shot thing. After we do this, it can never be undone and can never be done again. After they finished talking, the demon lord went to sleep and Naruto decided to go talk to B. After gathering enough natural chakra, he concentrated very hardly on the Horatian Kunai located at his old friend's training grounds in Kumo. Naruto had finally learned an off way to use his dad's jutsu, but even with all the chakra he had it would leave him depleted, using nature chakra was the only way around this. So after concentrating hard enough, he finally disappeared in a flash of orange. He reappeared in the Kumo training grounds instantly with his senjutsu gone. The tall blonde quickly fell to the ground breathing heavily and decided to take a moment to rest. After a few minutes of lying down, he quickly got up and left to go to his friend's house and wait for the man. As he walked through the village, people were surprised to see him and were wanting to approach him to talk to their friend slash hero, but hesitated noticing his appearance and look of sadness that was following him. This made no one want to approach him. After letting himself in, he made himself a sandwich and then sat down in silence as he tried not to cry at his loss. Not too much longer, both Killer B and the wreckage bursted through the door and both looked worried. Naruto, what happened? My scouts I sent out to your village have all disappeared, and I don't think it's because of you. If anything, you look like you just went through hell what's going on? Darui asked him, his voice flowing smoothly through the shack not quite as loud as the previous Kage of his village. They're all dead. Naruto said quietly trying to stay composed. Killer B frowned at hearing this, confused and worried about his friend asked, I yo my lil' bro, what you mean they all dead? Give the debts and don't forget none or else I'll put a stick in your head. B said trying to rap, before getting a nasty look from Darui. Sasuke. He showed up at the village late last night and I was happy obviously, I haven't seen him since I became Hokage, I've been too busy to travel. Well while I was sleeping Sasuke did something unthinkable. He. Naruto's voice cracked, his hand shaking as he made a fist. He massacred the village without raising a single alarm. That's because he made a shadow clone to kill off civilians while he took out patrolling Umbu and Jounin. He worked through the village murdering everyone with ease. I was at home with Hinata sleeping. I had woken up early due to Baruto crying and then I saw it happen. Sasuke took his sword and plunged it through his tiny infant body, not a shred of guilt on his face. Naruto choked on his words as he tried not to break down. B and Darui gave each other grave looks at hearing this before Darui spoke up. I understand this is hard Naruto, the pain is fresh, but please continue Naruto nodded and once he got himself together he said, after I saw that happen I exploded in anger and unleashed Kurama's chakra cloak as I charged at Sasuke to rip him apart only to find out he was the clone. Naruto stopped again choking once more. Then I heard it. Hinata's voice screaming out. I was in the room in less than a second and saw Sasuke again smirking as his Sharingan and Rinnegan were both activated as his sword was plunged through her stomach not killing her instantly, but the wound was fatal. I was so angry. I pulled out all of Kurama's chakra and the sage's power that was still within me from the war somehow before charging at Sasuke. But again, he popped as it was shown to be another clone. That's when I noticed what had happened I had finally sensed it. Everyone was dying. Kakashi Sensei I was dead, Sakura, Ino, Choji, Shikamaru, Shino, and many more. By now though I started to hear explosions as I noticed people fighting. Back. I quickly charged through the village killing every clone I encountered hoping it was the real Sasuke. But every time I killed one I would find more and more. I felt people in the village dying faster and faster and I couldn't save anyone. Until finally it was done. Everyone in the village was dead, all except his daughter, who I couldn't sense in the village. 
I believe you removed her thinking he was going to win and then raise her. Naruto stopped to take a breath, then there was a mass pop as all the clones dispelled themselves. I went into full Kurama mode looking for Sasuke who then came at me in his Susanoo. We fought and fought destroying the village, not caring about it anymore as the only life I could sense was nature itself and Sasuke. It took everything I had and then some, but I finally killed him. The fighting finally finished just a few hours ago, he was stronger than ever, but I was stronger than him. After I finished burying my friends and family, I borrowed some Senjutsu and used the eration to get here. Naruto finished leaving out the talk he had with Kurama. The three sat in silence, Darui and Killer be thinking deeply before speaking whilst Naruto just sat there holding his own self trying not to break down again. After some time had passed, Darui finally spoke up, Naruto. I have no words for you because no one has ever gone through something like this. But I can promise you this. He started getting both Naruto and Killer B's attention. No matter what you decide to do next, the rest of the other villages are here for you no matter what. But what you do next is up to you, my friend. Now I am sorry, but I must make my leave. I must inform the other villages as soon as I can with the eagles and call for a summit to decide what we should all do. Darui said quickly leaving for the village. But before the man left though he gave Naruto a small hug before disappearing in a lightning shushin. After he left B finally said, Kyuki told me what you and Kurama are going to do. But he has his worries since this jutsu was never tested. But know he trusts you to do it. Please be careful brother Killer B said knowing the time to rap was gone. When am I ever careful? Naruto joked silently laughing as the older man smiled as the two left each other's embrace. So what are you going to do now? Killer B asked as he looked at Naruto who was now standing just a bit taller than him as the boy had finally grown again now towering a little over six feet tall at the ripe age of 26. I guess for now just wait. That is until Kurama is ready to take me back. I have a favor to ask of you though, Naruto said, surprising the man. Anything for you, man. Anything the man said to his blonde friend. If, by some chance, I overshoot the jump and you remember everything. Find me in the leaf and train me. Now I may be wary of you because my childhood wasn't the best and even if I don't overshoot but you remember anything. Even just a little. Contact me somehow. Please be that's all I need of you. Naruto said. I know Kurama said that no one would be able to remember anything, but hey I need to have some kind of hope right? I can't give up just yet Naruto was forcing a smile as tears fell down his face. B gave the boy a hug before speaking. If I remember anything I will instantly seek you out I owe you that much killer B said with a small smile. Thank you. Now time for sleep, Naruto said as he took B's bed and quickly falling asleep. Said man chuckled letting the boy have his sleep as he left the shack he called home. Two days later B. Naruto yelled out as the man jogged over to the man. Is it time? He asked even though he knew the answer. Naruto gave a small smile and then hugged his best friend. I hope to see you soon and if not. Will we will see each other somehow Naruto said with a half smile. The two let go of the embrace and Naruto closed his eyes to see himself in front of Kurama. Well, are you ready to go through with this? We can always cancel this and you can live out your life here. Kurama said making sure Naruto was ready for this. Naruto hesitated for a moment but then remembered that he had to do this. I could never live here. Not without Hinata and Baruto. There is no life without those two inch Naruto said giving his answer. Okay well prepare yourself because even I'm not sure what will happen once I perform this. All we can do is hope that it works out right, the beast said. He then quickly focused all of his chakra together and yelled out, Sijiato, Jiken Hakajutsu, Sage Art, Time Disruption Jetsu. At first nothing happened and then Naruto a bright flash of light came. Naruto screamed as it felt like his body was burning and seizing all at once. Unconsciousness came quickly to, to the yellow-haired ninja as he awaited what was on the other side. Eighteen years previously Naruto slowly woke up to hear yelling. Groggily he looked around until he saw white everywhere. 
Okay, so I'm in a hospital or I'm dead, he thought to himself before he finally started to see everything and when he did he shot straight up to his feet before collapsing to the ground in pain. Naruto, a familiar voice yelled out to the boy before rushing to his side putting the boy back in the bed. Someone get down here and help this boy now or else I will fire everyone here the older man yelled out with a voice of such authority everyone stopped what they were doing to help. J.I.J.I. J. I. Naruto yelled out in his thoughts finally recognizing his voice and seeing him for his own self. Hi, Hokajesama a random doctor said as he came over to Naruto's side and started to look him over. I don't see why I have to help this demon brat, he muttered just loud enough for Naruto to hear. Dog Hiruzen said as said Umbu showed up instantly. This is Naruto's 8th birthday and once again he is in the hospital and I want to know why find. Out all that you can he said as dog nodded and disappeared in a shirshan. The aging Hokage walked to young Naruto as the boy had finally fallen asleep and the doctor reluctantly healed him. So how is he? Will he be alright the man asked the doctor. The boy has a laceration on the posterior of his right arm, it's superficial though. Where the real problem was the blunt force trauma to the chest superior to the sternum, it's caused a tension pneumothorax, we noticed due to the JVD, luckily the tenant is helping heal him. His tibia slash fibula is torn on his right leg and the ACL was completely torn in his left leg, looks like it was slashed with a weapon the doctor said seemingly uncaring. Hiruzen took a moment to process all of this, thank you Kira-san the Kage said acknowledging the doctor by his name. Of course Hokajesama Kira said watching what he said around the Hokage. Heal up all that you can for now and then you may leave for the night, the Kage said as Kira just nodded getting to work before leaving. As soon as Kira was gone Hiruzen said, Bear, Turtle come out. Hi Hokusama the two said appearing out of nowhere simultaneously and answering at the same time. Bear I want you to keep watch on young Naratosan and make sure he doesn't leave until tomorrow at least and make sure no one does anything to him without me here with him he said as Bear just nodded and then went to hide in the shadows. Turtle I want you to go to Narutakun's home and make sure it is still intact and keep it that way until he returns if it is damaged let me know immediately hi Hokusama he said before shushing to Naruto's apartment which wasn't too far away. Hiruzen looked down at the boy once more I'm sorry Narutakun. At least now you're starting the academy and will eventually be able to defend yourself better when you're faced with these difficulties, he said before calling out one more umbu, Cat I want you to inform Irika, Naruto's teacher at the academy and tell him that Naruto is in the hospital and may be here for a few days at most the man said before someone burst into the room. By this point Naruto was unconscious from the drugs in his system. God damn it here is Ensensai that's it I want the boy in my custody now. I can't sit back and watch the village destroy him year after year. This may be my first time back, but I still have contacts. A white-haired ninja said while simultaneously setting up a barrier in the room. Jiraiya, you can't take Naruto. As much as I would love for him to go with you, it would raise too many red flags. The village's most hated person suddenly disappears with a sand name? People would be in an outrage, I'm sorry, but it cannot happen, Hiruzen said with anger and sadness in his voice. I hate seeing him in so much pain every year, but he can't know about who he is and he can't up and leave with you, he's in the academy. You know this is total bullshit, he should have been with me since the day after everything happened. Jiraiya screamed at his sensei. Your job to the village is more important to he was cut off. Damn my job. This is Minato's fucking kid, my godson. Do you know how hard it is seeing him suffer? All I can do is leave gifts in his apartment or at his door without him ever knowing it's me. Tears started to swell in the Sanin's eyes as he sat down running a hand through his hair. I get my job to the village as a spymaster is important, but this is my student's only child, his legacy, and every year he almost dies, any normal person would die. If anything, Naruto is lucky to have the QB inside of him because that is at least keeping him alive from your ruthless villagers. Trying to murder a child who doesn't even understand what he did to gain their hate because he's trying to keep them alive. It kills me too, but there is nothing we can do. When the time comes when you can safely be in his life, I promise I will call you back to the village. You will get a break from your missions to train Naruto even. Once he graduates the academy, I'll let you know. 
but he is still young so for now do your job and let me protect him. Kakashi is doing all he can to help too. He leaves him money and gifts and food too from time to time, and I take Naruto out also. I even got Naruto his own apartment that I currently pay for since the council has my hands tied. I can't adopt him, but I can help at least. For now we do what we can, and once he becomes a ninja we train him to be even better than Minato Viruzen said, trying to make a deal with Jiraiya. Okay. But I will return, if I see Naruto, and he's not doing better I'm just going to kidnap him, and no one will stop me, so warn the council. If I come back and he is dead or almost dying I swear I will bring wrath upon them and the village. With that Jiraiya left and Iruzen looked at Naruto sadly not knowing what he was going to do, for now he just sat in the chair next to the child and closed his eyes looking for sleep to clear his mind. Next morning with Irika, I hope Naruto's all right, the teacher thought to himself as he entered his classroom. Everybody shut up and SIT down, he yelled at his class as everyone quickly sat down and quieted up. Now I have some news to tell all of you before class begins, he said, getting some surprised looks from some kids. Well, Naruto isn't here, so maybe something happened. I hope everything's okay, a young Nara thought to himself. HN Abruti Uchiha thought to himself. I wonder where Narutakun is, a lonely Hyuga thought to herself, sad her crush wasn't there. Now as you all know yesterday was the yearly festival of the day our Yandame defeated the QB no Kitsune. It was also Naruto Uzumaki's birthday he said getting more surprised looks. Now as most of you may know he isn't very liked and was attacked yesterday night by a mob of civilians and is currently in the hospital with many injuries he said getting a wave of reactions from his class. From good riddance and other insults to the few kids asking if he will be fine. As the talking died down he answered everyone by saying, he will be fine but won't be here for a few days. Now on with class Irika said starting his first lecture of the day. At the hospital Naruto slowly started to stir waking up. He quickly remembered where he was and smiled very happily because everything was back and he was eight. I'm eight now so what does that mean hmm? He thought to himself. Oh yeah, the Echiha massacre already happened. Crap. What else? I'm in the academy still. There's also an Umbu here watching me. Well, here goes nothing Naruto thought to himself before slowly trying to stand before feeling extreme pain and crashing to the ground. Bear saw this and quickly caught the boy. Yuzumakasen, are you alright? He asked before he saw his superior walk in. It's okay Bear you're relieved I'll watch him from here on out let Hokajesama no dog said as Bear nodded and left. Kakashi Naruto thought excitedly as he saw the white hair stick out and recognized the voice. Are you alright Naruto-kun he asked as Naruto sat up in his bed and nodded his head. That's good to know, now can you remember what happened yesterday? No sorry, he answered trying to act like his old self when he used to be scared all the time. You don't need to be scared, Narutakun, I'm here to help you, he said well. I am really hungry, he said, as the Umbu Captain Sweat dropped at that remark before making a clone to go get the two food. The two sat in silence until Naruto asked him, why do you wear that mask? To protect my identity, he answered softly. Do all Umbu wear masks as cool as yours, he said, making the older man softly laugh. Yes, we all wear them, but mine is the best, he joked as they both laughed. Do you think we could play a game? It's so boring in here, he complained, fitting into the role of a child easily. Oh? And what do you propose we play? He asked, curious as to what they could do. Chess Naruto said with a grin. I'm pretty sure we could do that, let me just get a set real quick, he said, taking off as his clone dropped the food off and dispelled. Not wasting any time, Naruto quickly ate his food before going into his seal. It worked. Naruto said with glee as the fox smiled back. Indeed it did, but that used so much of my chakra that I will be weak for months, so you won't heal as fast as normal, the giant beast said to the young boy who just shrugged it off. Now that we're back in the beginning, what's your plan? The fox asked curiously. Nothing. I ain't gonna do jack shit. I'm gonna relax until I become a genin. Naruto said as the fox sweat dropped. Are you sure? You could train now get stronger faster be more of an asset and do more. 
he said, proving a lot of points. As true as that is I can't stray too far from what happened last time or chaos will. Happened and then my knowledge of the future will be useless. But you are right I will make small changes where I think they need to be made and I will obviously grow a lot stronger because I now know how to properly train. Naruto said, That is true but for now you can start with the basics like chakra control because you will definitely need that. That's all I plan on learning right now. Maybe work on speed and strength too, he said as the Karama listened. Whatever Brett now get going Kakashi is approaching you, he said as Naruto smiled and left. Wow, you already finished eating. Kakashi said before noticing that Naruto ate his food also. I got hungry so yeah, he said with a chuckle. Kakashi was kinda sad that he had no food but waved it off before pulling up a chair and small table. Whatever I found the game now let us play Kakashi said as Naruto smiled and the two started the game carefully. Naruto woke up and glanced at his clock and saw that he was probably gonna be late for his first day back at school since he just got home. He hated having to heal slowly but now he could start training and start fixing things he could also enjoy his youth this time. He looked around his small apartment and was saddened by how unlively it looked. He got up carefully holding his ribs because they were still hurting and then got dressed. Once that was finished he grabbed his gama wallet which was thankfully full and left his apartment via the stairway. On his way down he got his daily fill of evil stares and people muttering about him. As he walked down the street he hinged into an older version of himself but with darker hair and civilian clothing. Once he had done that he walked into a clothing store to pick up some clothes for himself. He replaced his jacket that he usually wears with the less orange one that he had gotten with his travels with Jiraiya before he returned to the village. After finding a couple he also got some of the same pants to go with them and paid for them, then made a shadow clone to return them home as he went to his favorite ramen stand. As he got closer he dropped the hinge and walked into his favorite food place while greeting some of the best people he'd ever known. Good morning I am Nasan, Tuchijiji Naruto said with a wide smile sitting down as the two smiled seeing him. Our favorite customer where have you been? Tuchi said jokingly as he prepared Naruto's food already knowing what he wanted. Not good actually. I just got out of the hospital I was attacked again on the QB festival the small boy answered. I am couldn't help but walk around and give him a hug and kiss his cheek. I'm sorry Otadakin she said teasing him before walking back behind the counter to help her dad. Tucci came out with the bowl and said, well this first one's on the house he said with a smile which made Naruto smile and slurp down his miso ramen very quickly. Thanks Gigi can I get a miso pork now he asked with a smile as the old man made it for him. As Naruto's food was being made Naruto decided to converse with Ayam. So how have you been Ayam Mekin he said making the older girl smile for a second at the Chan. Pretty good how about you Naruto-kun she said playing around with him. Eh yeah, well you know he said before being given his food. He smiled as he smelled it before gulping it down again and then paying for it. Well I've got to go guys unfortunately I have school which I'm late for but I promised to stop by again later he promised while taking off in a slow jog. It didn't take him long to get to the academy. He quickly walked inside the building and got to his class. As he walked in he saw Irika taking roll call and wasn't at his name which meant he technically wasn't late yet. It's good to see you back Naruto how are you feeling? Irika asked as Naruto sat down in his seat while also stopping his roll call. Fine besides my ribs he said while the room got deathly quiet. Well it's good to have you back he said but the boy just ignored him as he had noticed his clone dispelled. Not too much longer class started back up and Naruto kinda just ignored it. That was until Shikamaru nudged him in the side to get his attention. What's up? Naruto asked the boy curious as to what he wants to know. Irika was talking the other day and I wanted to ask you if it was true if you really are an Uzumaki from the Uzumaki clan he asked him curious. Honestly? I have no idea I was given the name Uzumaki by Gigi. I would like to think that I am though. I did some research on my own and the only other Uzumakis who lived in this village was Kushina Uzumaki, a jounin also known by the nickname Red Hot Habanero. The other Uzumaki was Mito Uzumaki and she was married to the Shodame. Naruto said which made Shikamaru groan. Shikamaru sighed before saying, 
you just got a lot more troublesome if you are a real Uzumaki, well whatever sorry for bothering you he said before going to sleep. Naruto just chuckled and looked around the room to see Sasuke staring at him. Wonder what his problem is he thought to himself before looking around the room some more before he saw Anata. Said girl instantly blushed when she saw him looking at her and she started to mess with her fingers while Naruto just softly smiled a sad smile remembering how happy they were. I promise you Haim I will get you back just wait for me. I promise you won't wait as long as you had to last time he silently promised her before looking around the room before he heard something of interest from Irika. Okay everybody get up it's time to go outside today we're going to learn how to throw shuriken and kunai the teacher said as a lot of people got excited while others looked worried or didn't care altogether. As everyone gathered outside Irika took out a single kunai and said would anyone like to try throwing it at the target for him? Example Of course giving the chance to show off Sasuke raised his hand but so did Naruto at the same time. Naruto smirked while Sasuke only looked at him with anger. Two volunteers, huh? Okay, then Sasuke, you first, then you can go next, Naruto. Arika said, handing them each one kunai. Sasuke smirked and threw the kunai, just barely missing the bullseye. Good job, Sasuke, now you, Naruto. The teacher said as Naruto and Sasuke went to switch places, but not before Sasuke tripped Naruto. Naruto smirked as he fell and tucked into a roll while throwing his kunai at the same time and hitting the bullseye surprising everyone there. Arika though was just amazed he had only seen people do that kind of thing in battle and stuff not just for laughs. Stop trying to look good you freaking baka and oh one's better than Sasuke that was obviously a fluke, a certain pink haired banshee yelled. Whatever Naruto said not even acknowledging her. Which only served to piss her off more. You're just jealous that Sasuke is better than you, and we all know you could never do that again. She screamed at him. Without saying a word, Naruto grabbed the pile of kunai and shuriken and immediately threw all of them, hitting every bullseye perfectly before turning to her and saying, Let us see you do that first try, you bitch, making everyone surprised. Not only from the perfect throws which had a certain Uchiha fuming with anger, but also with the language he used at the girl. Sakura had no response instead she just went with her anger and tried to punch Naruto who swiftly parried it and elbowed her in the face knocking her down to the ground before quickly dropping his arm to hold his side. He threw his RM a little too hard and it brought more pain than he thought. Everyone was shocked at what just happened and Irika didn't know what to do. So he just made it up. Sakura go inside right now you should know better than to attack someone including when they just got out of the hospital. Naruto you can go rest under that tree if need be if not just get back in line with everyone else. After saying that a certain pink haired girl got very angry but she just went inside. After that everyone finally calmed down and Irika kept teaching his class and had people try throwing kunai and shuriken helping those who needed it. Later that day after school had gotten out Naruto had decided to make a change of the future for the better. He wanted to make Hinata his friend, nothing too serious, but maybe by befriending her she would become more confident in herself and become stronger. He also wasn't going to be head over heels for Sakura and try to put the fear of Kami in her, she scattered by their entire childhood not doing anything and barely surviving. He needs to make sure she can't get stronger but also become a better person, even if she ends up hating him forever. So as soon as school had ended and everyone was quickly leaving to go meet up with friends or parents. Or whatever Naruto walked over to Hinata, hey Hinata. He started not to sure as what to say. Good afternoon Narutakin she stuttered out with a blush. God how I've missed you and your stutters and blushes and everything. I'm sorry my little rabbit Naruto thought solemnly to his own self. I was wondering if I could walk you home. Naruto asked her as her pale white eyes opened wide and her blush deepened a new shade of crimson. Narutakun wants to walk home. With me. Please Kami don't let me faint now the small girl thought to herself as she was starting to feel lightheaded and wobbly. Naruto quickly held her by her arm and side and said, Are you okay Hinatakin you seem kinda dizzy. Here let's get that jacket off you must be dying in it. Naruto said as she started to freak out now as he started to pull the zipper down on her jacket. Before she could stop him he had the zipper pulled all the way down and was taking it off. 
She did have to admit she wasn't as dizzy with the cool air touching her body. Thank you, Narutakun, she said, while blushing and twiddling with her fingers. She then grabbed her jacket and started to put it back on before Naruto said, You know you're really cute under that jacket, Heim. This had finally beaten everything and the girl could no longer stay conscious. Naruto sighed and smiled as he put her jacket back on before picking her a bridal stride and making his leave. He quickly took to the roofs using chakra to help propel himself all the way to the Hyuga compound. Once he got there and saw the guards he decided to be cautious, walking slowly towards them. Hey there he called out to them as they looked over mortified at what they saw. Hinatakin here fainted at school and I thought I would bring her home for you guys sorry if I'm any trouble Naruto said with a goofy grin. The one Hyuga said something into his headset and for a few moments nothing happened and then he said Hayashisama had left to go get her not too long ago but he is grateful for what you have done now follow me the gate guard said to the small blonde boy who followed him into the compound. Naruto smiled as he looked around seeing all the life happy that everyone's still okay and alive and everything. Even if the Hyuga still had their own problems on the inside, but nothing Hinata won't fix in the years to come. The two quickly entered the main house and Naruto was led to Hinata's room as they got there the guard told him to set down Hinata-sama and then to wait in the living room. Naruto did as told and sat there patiently waiting for Hayashi to show up. The man walked in not too much longer as Hanabi followed behind him cautiously. Hanabi go wait in the other room, I won't be long, I just need to talk with young Naritosin here, the man said as his daughter just nodded and left. Hayashi called in one of the branch Yuga and asked him to make the two some tea. After the nameless Yuga left, he turned his attention to the young blonde in front of him. I wanted to formally thank you, young Naritosin, for safely bringing my eldest daughter home after her little incident. If I may ask what happened? He said curious as to what happened even though he knew of his daughter's crush on the young blonde here. Well after class had ended I went up to talk to Hynatikin and was asking her if I could possible walk her home. She started to feel lightheaded and dizzy so I had helped her out of her jacket thinking she may be overheated and when I did I had called her cute being nice and complimenting her on her looks and once that had happened she had fainted not too long after. Not wanting to leave her there alone I put her jacket back on her and picked her up and rushed her. He said not leaving out a single detail. I am grateful for this, but you should watch how you talk to my daughter. You cannot just go around calling her cute Hayashi said emphasizing said word trying to scare Naruto a little, but I do have to thank you for making sure she was safe and also I would like to ask you how you carried her from the school to here when that is roughly five miles as I am aware of what happened the other night as Hinata was asking about you with worry. The man asked even though he had an idea. Well as you know I'm not well liked in the village so I had to teach myself to travel by rooftop to escape the villagers and so I carried her via rooftops all the way here even though my ribs do hurt a lot and are still in immense pain it was no trouble at all for someone I consider a good friend even if me and her don't talk much I consider her a precious person due to the fact that she has never once tried to raise a finger against me and has always defended me. The boy said surprising Hayashi very much at his answer. By now the tea had been served and Hayashi was slowly sipping at it as was Naruto as the two sat in silence for a moment before the older man finally spoke up. Well again thank you for bringing her home and I wouldn't be against it if you wished to be her friend. Hayashi said catching the boy off guard. Hayashi smiled slightly as the boy fumbled around surprised at what the man had said before Hayashi said. Also if it's not too much trouble would you want to come over for dinner sometime? He asked now really scaring Naruto. Shit things are moving really fast now. I get it so you and my dad were super good friends and now you feel guilty so you're trying to make up plus him supposed to be married off to Hinata anyways but last time you didn't do this until after the war or say anything. The boy thought to himself. He suddenly smiled widely and said, I would love to how does tomorrow sound. Hayashisama? Naruto asked the man. The man smiled and said, that would work out perfectly, I look forward to seeing you then, but I am sorry now, but I have to ask you to leave now, there is some business I must attend to, Hayashi said as Naruto bowed to the man. Before leaving, Naruto quickly left and went straight to the Hokage building. He quickly got up to his Gigi's office and opened the door to see the Sandame not doing anything but paperwork. 
Ah, good evening, Narutakun. How are you feeling today? The elder man asked his surrogate grandson. I'm fine. I just had a question to ask you. He said with a grin. Oh, and what may that be? He asked the young child while getting a small break from his paperwork. Could you help me get nice clothes? Hinata's dad Hayashi invited me to dinner tomorrow night. Naruto said while the Hokage seemed taken back by this. It's too soon for them to be married off and he only knows your Minato's kid because of the betrothal. What are you planning Hayashi? The elder man thought to himself in his moment of silence as he lit his pipe. Yes I shall take you out. It's about time you learned how to properly dress and behave. The Hugas could teach you a thing or two about menorisms. Hiruzen said, pointing out a flaw in Naruto's lifestyle, afterwards maybe we could get some food. The Hokage said to Naruto, making him smile with the bribery of food while teasing him about how he acted. That was a low blow GG and yay free food. Naruto said in happiness as he shot towards the Kage and hugged him. Naruto decided to be lenient on his grandfather and said, Why don't you make clones to help you with all that work? Dog uses clones to help him with silly stuff when we were in the hospital together, Naruto said as Sabutori's eyes widened. Kami damn it. How did I never think of that? It's genius I can cut my workload down tenfold. He thought before making a familiar hand seal and pouring chakra into it before saying, Kage Bunshin no Jutsu making roughly 15 clones who all went straight to work. He smiled with himself and then left with Naruto. The next day Naruto awoke and felt great. He fell down to his sides and was happy to see the pain was gone, knowing what that meant he went into his seal to speak with his old friend. Kit the Bijou said getting the attention of his tenant. You know you're awesome, right? Naruto said with a big goofy grin while transforming into his true self feeling free again. I regained my chakra back faster than I thought I would, Kurama said before continuing, so when are you going to release me from this damn seal? You know I hate being cooped up, plus when I'm free I can change the setting in here to something better. The giant fox thought pervertedly at that. Okami Naruto said sighing. You know it will be a while because I will need to prove to Jiraiya that I can handle myself which will have him release the seal slowly until finally you're free it may take a while but don't worry I promise you'll be free again. Plus I get to meet my dad the first time I try to rip the seal off and I want to talk with him again as I wasn't really able to last time I saw him due to the circumstances. The blonde haired blue eyes man said to his giant demon fox friend. Whatever just hurry it up I hate being caged. Kamara said while laying down. I'll try old friend Naruto promised before leaving his mind. He got himself up and quickly got dressed. He noticed he had plenty of time to get to school so he quickly shot off towards the Hyuga compound hoping to catch Hinata before she left. Naruto took to the roofs quickly flying across the village feeling free as the air ran through him. He decided he would let his hair grow out this time around to look more like his dad. As he flew through the village, he came to a sudden stop as he saw Hanada and her father walking side by side in silence to school. Naruto quickly jumped down being noticed by Hayashi, but the man didn't say anything yet. Naruto jogged over to them greeting them both. Good morning Hayashisama, Hinatakin he said with a smile and a bow to the father. Good mm morning Narutakun, Hanada managed to get out without too much trouble. Good morning Naruto-san, Hayashi greeted back. What brings you here this morning? Shouldn't you be heading to school, he said even though he had an idea of what he was going to say. He really is your son, Nanato. I just wish you could be here to see him. I promise to you I will try to be there for him more now that I have him befriending my daughter slash his future wife, he thought with a silent giggle. I failed you in the past, Naruto, but I can't drop who I am, so for now I will just have to slowly accept you into the family until everyone else accepts you. Hayashi thought as he watched Naruto carefully. Well, I was hoping to catch you guys before you left to see if I could walk Hinata to school since I couldn't walk home with her yesterday, Naruto said with a small laugh and a scratch to the back of his head. That's when Naruto noticed that Hinata was in shorts and a t-shirt for the first time ever. Naruto quickly blushed as he saw her like that, surprised that Hayashi allowed her to dress like that. Hinata noticed the boy staring at her and started to blush also. 
Hayashi just silently chuckled at the scene remembering a similar scene between a certain blonde and redhead from his childhood. After a few moments of silence, Hayashi spoke up again. Well, I guess it can't be helped you may walk with us, Hayashi said with a small smile as Naruto got next to Inada. The girl smiled as she saw her crush next to her and they all walked side by side in silence for a while. Once they started to near the academy, Hayashi spoke up addressing Naruto, I hope to see you in proper clothing tonight when you come over for dinner. That won't be a problem now, will it, Naruto-kun? Hayashi asked him knowing about Naruto's problems with the village. No, sir. Also, Hakujij wanted me to ask if he could come with me tonight. I had told him about tonight because I needed help buying the right clothing yesterday. Naruto said. Hayashi sighed. Shidhokajesima. Might not be too happy about this. I'll just explain to him in private before or after dinner depending. Hayashi thought to himself before answering, of course he may. Just make sure you're at the compound no earlier than 630 and no later than 7 tonight, Hayashi said before dropping the two kids off. Naruto just nodded before grabbing Hinata's hand and running inside since they were almost late. Said girl blushed at the physical content, but smiled also as the two ran inside together before finding their seat and sitting next to each other. Naruto saw her shiver showing that she was actually cold and so in turn he took off his jacket and handed it to her. Here I'm not that cold anyways, you can wear it. He said to the small girl who smiled and blushed deeply before putting it on finally warming up. It smells like him. She thought blushing deeply. Not too much longer class started and Naruto ignored it once more not really caring too much. Instead, he looked over to Hinata and smiled at how cute she looked in his jacket. Some other kids were giving the two weird looks since Hinata and Naruto were being strangely close. Naruto decided that he would just nap with Shikamaru like usual. Naruto woke up with Iruka yelling at him and Shikamaru to come outside for taijutsu practice before class ended. The two stretched and smiled at each other before walking outside to join the rest of the class. As soon as the two were with everyone else, Irika started to call out the matches, having everyone fight one at a time against each other. It didn't take long for Irika to get to Sasuke and Naruto. Uzumaki Naruto versus Uchiha Sasuke, he said, as all the girls except one were calling out at Sasuke while yelling insults at Naruto. The two got in the ring and waited to begin. Iruka started the match and Sasuke instantly charged Naruto. The latter boy smirked. His years of fighting made this seem like nothing. He just sidestepped to the right while he brought his elbow down on the dark-haired boy's neck making Sasuke fall. Only for his face to be hit by Naruto's knee making the boy fall to his back. The class was silent to see this turn of events. And then it happened. Everyone started yelling insults at Naruto calling him a cheater and all sorts of things. Well except for Shikamaru, Choji, Kiba, and Hinata. Sasuke though was out cold, so Iruka picked the boy up and moved him under the tree for shade while all the girls flocked to him to make sure he was alright. Iruka soon ended class telling everyone to practice throwing shuriken and kunai while also practicing the hinge. Naruto meanwhile just walked off to get ready for tonight he knew he had a few hours, but he wanted to be fully ready. Later that night Naruto and Hiruzen walked side by side to the Hyuga compound as Hiruzen had a very expensive and hard to come by bottle of wine for a gift to give Hayashi. They were both dressed up somewhat nicely and talking about meaningless things. So Naruto, my boy what is your dream for the future? He asked the young boy as Naruto's face seemed to get very serious and distant for a moment before he smiled. I want to have a big family and bring peace to the world like the ninja in this book I got on my birthday. Naruto then took out a very familiar green book that made the old man's eyes go wide for a moment. So that's what you gave him this time around. Hajirai and Naruto continued to speak. In this story, the main character's name is also Naruto. And he's trying to achieve peace for all of the ninja world. I wish to get that through any means I can. I don't know who this Jiraiya is, but he must be some amazing guy to write a story like this, Naruto said, as the old man smiled brightly trying not to laugh at Naruto's words of calling Jiraiya a great writer. That's an excellent dream, Naruto-kun. Your parents would be proud to know you're taking after Jiraiya in the only good way possible. 
the man said, keeping the last part to his own self. The two approached the compound and were greeted by Hayashi and Hinata. Greetings Hokajesima, the elder Hyuga said with a slight bow, his daughter bowing also before she saw Naruto and blushed slightly. Greetings to you also Hayashisen, the Hokage said with a smile. I brought you a treat, he said, handing over the wine to Hayashi who smiled as he looked over the bottle. Thank you dearly Hokajesima, now if you'll follow me inside. He said leading the Kage and Naruto into the house. Feel free to refer to me as Hiruzen for the evening if you wish Hayashisen. The Kage offered the Hyuga head. As you wish Hiruzensama Hayashi responded being as polite as he was political. As the small group of people walked inside the main house for supper, they saw many branch house members setting the final touches. Once finished the four sat down, Naruto across from Inada next to the Hokage and Hiruzen across from Hayashi who chose to sit by his daughter. Hayashi handing the bottle of wine to a branch member, put these with the others and then bring out the first course and a nice white wine for everyone. He said as the branch member nodded disappearing only for four plates of food to come out immediately. Hayashi, I am sorry to intrude before the meal starts, but may I speak to you in private for a moment? The old man asked. Hayashi sighed knowing this was going to happen and agreed walking to the other room with the Kage leaving the two kids alone. Hinata blushed as she saw Naruto eyeing her while Naruto blushed slightly from the wine and at how beautiful his rabbit is. Naruto smiled and playfully kicked her under the table. Hinata gasped until she saw him smile. She couldn't help but giggled before she then went to kick him back and for the next few moments they playfully played footsies with one another. After they stopped Naruto got up and sat next to Hinata. You know you're really pretty in that kimono he said causing the girl to blush. Slightly. You look handsome yourself Naruto-kun she said with a hiccup at the end. Naruto moved her glass away from her deeming she had enough to drink. Even though they both had only had a single glass, they were also just kids. Naruto could also tell that Kurama wasn't helping out either probably to have fun and watch the boy struggle with the alcohol. I'm really glad you're my friend Hinatakin, Naruto said giving her a hug. I'm glad you're mine too, she said with a small stutter for a second there before hugging back. Naruto slowly let go and not a second later the two men walked back in and jokingly Hiruzen said, Are we interrupting something? Both kids got very red at this finally realizing at how close they were while Naruto flew backwards a good ten feet. And 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 neither child could say anything as they were both embarrassed at what happened. I don't remember telling you too that you could drink the wine Hayashi pretended to be angry before laughing with the Hokage. Wait. Hayashi was laughing and happy while sober. What witchery is this? Thought everyone but Hayashi. Hayashi was planning on having a talk with Naruto about a lot of things, but now cannot so instead he decided to have a happy night with everyone else which he did. From here on out you are no longer Dog Umbu Captain, you shall return as Jounin, Hataki Kakashi, and will start taking on Jinin. Hiruzen said to the man who kneeled before him. Kakashi sat there before his Hokage as he listened to him speak. He had his umbu mask taken off and started to hand it to the man. Thank you, Hokajesima. I appreciate your kindness in taking me out of umbu. He said to the surprised Hiruzen. My boy, no need to thank me. I just believe you are better suited out of umbu living your life normally again. You've been in umbu longer than anyone else. It was time, the old man said with a slight chuckle. Kakashi just nodded at this before standing in front of the elder Kage. The Kage once again repeated himself, so from here on out Kakashizen you shall be seen as Jounin of our precious village and will start taking on Jinin teams. Hi, Hokajesima Kakashi said. Dismissed to Takesen, the old man said as Kakashi nodded and disappeared in a swirl of leaves. The elder Kage sighed before walking back to his office. As he walked he smiled as he saw a certain young blonde running around looking for him. J.I.J.I. J. I. The boy yelled pointing at his surrogate grandfather. Where have you been? You said we could go get ramen together with Hainatakin. Hi, hi Narutakun I just had to do something real quick the Kage said. But then again why do you need me there? I don't need to be around in order for your date to go on with the girl. Hyerzen said with a chuckle as he saw the young boy fidget at those words. 
What? Naruto's face blushed a little bit. It's not a date. She's my best friend ever. Well, besides you and Shikamaruza. Naruto said. Oh? How about young Sasukakin then? The Kage said teasing the boy as they walked down the road. Naruto then started yelling many insults as the elder Kage just started to chuckle having fun with the boy. The two had quickly approached the stand where they saw Hanada waiting for them. Greetings Hokajesima, Narutokun, she said as she bowed to the Kage. Hey Hainatakin. Naruto said hugging his friend making her blush at being so close to her crush before hugging him back. So have you been waiting long Hainata-san? The elder Saratobi asked as they all sat down. No, not long, Hokajesima. I just got here right before you did. She said with a slight smile. Three miss support, please, Naruto said to Tuchi as the Hokage just chuckled at the boy's nature to care more about food than others around him. Just one miss support for me, the elder said. Can I get a vegetable pork, please? Hinata asked the man behind the bar. The food will be done soon, you three, he turned around. I am come out here and help me, he said, calling out his teenage daughter who came out and started to help cook. The food came out not too much longer and the three began to eat as Naruto's bowls came and gone into larger and larger piles. Hinata sweat dropped as she saw this and asked, how much can you eat Naruto-kun? Trust me, you wouldn't believe me, he said through the slurps. Hinata and the Hokage just chuckled as they watched their favorite blonde slurp down the food like crazy. I'm sorry to cut this short you too, but I have somewhere I need to go, Hiruzen said. Tuchi, if you will, put all of this on my tab, please, the Hokage said as the other man smiled and nodded before the Kage left. As soon as the Hokage left, Naruto smiled and ordered even more ramen before turning to his friend. So what's been up with you, Hainatakin? Just training with my father. He says I've gotten better since we started training together, Hinata said happily. Naruto got his food and the two started to eat again. Once finishing, Hinata spoke up. So what now? She asked while finishing up her second bowl. Wanna go train? Naruto said as Hinata grinned. Let's. She said with a smile as the two ran off to their secret spot. The two kids finally showed up to their favorite spot to train after making sure there were no ninja already there. The two found out that a certain white-haired, masked-covered ninja showed up there a lot due to Inada checking ahead with her Byakugan. Once the two were in the clear to train, they jumped down from the tree they were on and quickly got started. So what should we do today, Naruto-kun? Hinata asked awaiting instruction from her crush. I think we should step it up some. My friend Lee gave me some ideas, but we would die before we finished the warm-up. Naruto stated as the two sweat dropped at that statement. So we're gonna do a lesser version of what he suggested. First we're going to run 100 laps around the clearing and... Yes, that means over the water to the other side. He said clearing that up before Hinata had asked. Thankfully they both knew how to walk on water and tree climbing. After that we'll do 50 sit-ups, 50 push-ups, and then get straight into sparring. He finished as Hinata smiled and nodded in agreement. While the two started their warm-ups, a white-haired man with a binocular closed his scope. I'm glad things have started changing for you, Naruto. You did good, Iruzen. If things were still the same, Naruto would be with me right now, but I'll uphold my end of the bargain, the man said to himself as he gathered his belongings. But I will be back soon to start training you, Naruto. And once I train you, no one will be able to stop you. But the training you do on your own is proof that you'll be a strong shinobi. You can already walk on water, which is surprising for a ninja of your generation, but I'm sorry I can't stay and know you now. The man said before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. Meanwhile, the two quickly set off to running not wanting to waste any time. It didn't take long for Hinata to work up a sweat, though not surprising due to what she wore. She went back to wearing her jacket and pants. Naruto, though, slowed down a little to get back with Hinata. You know you should really take that big coat of yours off. You must be dying, he said as they kept running. It is really hot, but... Hinata trailed off. She is very self-conscious of her body due to the fact that her body was starting to grow and some parts were already starting to show. It's okay, Hinatakin. It's just as the boy said with a smile making the girl blush. 
She reluctantly agreed, and as soon as they passed the water she shrugged it off before looking down and blushing hoping Naruto wouldn't judge her. All of a sudden a hawk was heard and Naruto looked up to see the bird coming down. Shit not now be he thought as his friend's letter was coming down. Naruto quickly made a shadow clone to deal with that as he kept running, his body finally getting back to normal. The clone quickly ran into the woodline, thankful Hinata didn't see him take off. It didn't take long for him to get to the bird, as soon as he did he grabbed the note and let the bird rest on his shoulder as he sat down to read the letter. Dear Naruto, I know I haven't made contact in a while, it's not so easy for me to get out A has been keeping me busy. But I decided to take on a Jin and team, the three have been a handful, but I have no doubt they could take you on right now. They're stronger than they look so watch out when the Chunin exams come around. I hope all is going well, I have yet to find any of our siblings to let them know what's going on unfortunately. I should be able to come by soon though to see you, so don't worry about responding. Your big brother, B the clone read the letter a couple more times to memorize it before burning the letter and destroying himself. Naruto slowed down to think about the letter, before getting back to the workout. The two kept running for another half hour before they finished and quickly got to work on their sit-ups and push-ups. As soon as they both finished Naruto quickly took his jacket off having worked up quite a sweat also and the two quickly got to work fighting. Hinata started off in her clan stance as Naruto just put his fists up and charged in with his own reckless fighting style, ready to attack. The two quickly started fighting their bodies dancing around each other so perfectly as they dodged and counter-attacked and plain ol' attacked each other. Hinata being naturally faster helped her in this also. Naruto meanwhile made up for this in pure power and skill plus his giant reserves of stamina. As the battle went on for now going on over half an hour Naruto started to see that Hinata was getting more and more sluggish and starting to slow down. This started to even up the fight more so for Naruto and he started to get in more punches and dodge more also. Not too much longer the fight became more one-sided with Hinata desperately trying to dodge and counterattack but failing. After a while Naruto punches Hinata hard enough and knocked her to the ground where she finally gave in. Naruto, now covered in sweat, took his shirt off to cool down before lying next to Hinata. Good job today, Hinatakin, you did really well. Let's rest for a little while and then we'll get back to work on our chakra elements and helping you raise your reserves. He said as Hinata smiled and blushed, seeing her crush's shirtless body. She lay there as her body relaxed, slowly falling asleep as was Naruto's. After a couple hours of resting Hinata was the first to wake up and blush deeply as she noticed what had happened. The two of them had fallen asleep by accident and Hinata ended up cuddling next to her crush using his bare chest as a pillow. He had unconsciously wrapped an arm around her and is currently holding her close to him. She was plopped half on top of him half not using him as a bed and pillow. She smiled at how nice it was and how comfy he was while also blushing furiously. Then she heard him muttering in his sleep and noticed he was having a nightmare. Sasuke no. Why did you do this? She heard him say his voice shaking. I loved her. Why did you kill them? You killed them all. Why his body started to shake violently, he was having a nightmare of some sort. His grip on her loosened as she shot up now worried about his blonde and his words that weren't making much sense to her. Because I wouldn't fight you after the war? War? She thought. You were always free to come back for helping us. Why did you do this? Why did you hurt my Baruto? And Hynatican he said his body starting to vibrate, a malice chakra oozing off of him as his voice started cracking. You bastard I'll fucking kill you for what you did. All of a sudden Hinata started to feel the very cold. And dark chakra coming off of Naruto out of nowhere. It was suffocating the very air she was breathing, scaring the hell out of her. Out of nowhere five Umbu shot down restraining the boy, and a sixth one grabbed Hinata and sprinted off wards away from Naruto. What's going on? What's wrong with Naruto? Hinata asked now very scared as she could still feel the chakra as could the whole village. The Umbu didn't answer her, but out of nowhere a menacing roar was heard and the evil chakra increased tenfold and Hinata started to see before her as the little forest that she and Naruto was in started to get completely destroyed by pure wind. 
and then out of nowhere the chakra was gone and the fighting stopped. Hinata not knowing what to do started crying worried about what might have happened to her Naruto. The umbu showed up in the Hokage's office while setting down the Hyuga child on a couch before looking to the Hokage who was in his battle robes ready to fight. Bear, ox, cat and squirrel are now restraining it the umbu said now revealing it to be a female due to the voice. Thank you Turtle San, but I had Jiraiya restrain him, hopefully no one was hurt. As we can tell now it's gone. Go get a medic and make sure everyone's okay. I'll stay here with young Hinata-san as I am guessing she has a few questions as do I. Hiruzen said finally letting out a breath he was holding in. The umbu just nodded softly before quickly disappearing. What's happened to Naruto-kun? Is he okay? What was that chakra? Why did it feel so scary? Hinata asked as her face still showed pure terror on it. One at a time, Hinata-san. Now, as with Naruto-kun, I do believe he is completely fine. The medic mean are for the umbu, unfortunately. That chakra. I cannot tell you about that. At least not now. I am sorry, I cannot go on further about it, but if you will answer my questions to help me figure out what happened, that would help a lot. Now, please tell me what happened before the umbu showed up. The Kage said to Hinata as she sat there in silence. Give yourself a minute to get yourself together before answering there is no rush as of now. He said trying to calm her down. After a few minutes Hinata finally answered a little shaky, me and Naruto had fallen asleep after some training in the field due to how nice it was. I woke up first and didn't really do anything but just lay there for a minute but then I heard Naruto talking in his sleep. He sounded sad and scared. So scared. He was having some sort of nightmare. He wasn't making any sense, but he was talking to Sasuke in it. He was asking why Sasuke had killed someone. Why he had to do that when he was free after some sort of war. I have no idea what he was talking about, but he was freaking out he started shaking and asked why he had to kill me and someone named Baruto. Then he lost it and started screaming about murdering Sasuke and that's when I started to feel that suffocating chakra. She said still looking scared at the thought of Karama's chakra. Okay. Thank you, Hinata. I'll have an umbu get your father to come get you, but I must make my leave right now as it is very urgent. The Kage said as he left. Hiruzen quickly left to go find Naruto who was still in the field unconscious as he saw the umbu being put onto stretchers. Some in very bad conditions. He only saw one of the four umbu who could maybe still be a ninja after this. The Kage made a shadow clone to go to the hospital with his umbu as he walked over to the sleeping boy. Hiruzen picked up the boy to see him asleep once more and carried him to his apartment. He set Naruto on his own bed before pulling out a chair and a book awaiting the boy's return to conscious. This isn't good, the QB is already fighting for control the white-haired man had returned and was leaning against the wall. According to Hinata, Naruto's friend who was their Naruto was having a nightmare. Talking about war, Sasuke Uchiha, and Hinata's death Hiruzen said worriedly. Do you think maybe Naruto was having a vision? One that was a little too vivid for him and his own anger ended up subconsciously pulling out the QB's chakra. Jiraiya asked worriedly. I'm not sure anything's possible. Thank you for calming the beast though. It was luck you were here today. Thank you Jiraiya, but you can't stay around here. It's not time for you and Naruto to meet yet Hiruzen said, being stern with how he talked showing he wasn't going to budge. Okay, but watch the kid closely. I've been here a few days, and he already knows the shadow clone Jetsu. I'm not sure how, but he makes a handful of clones every night to train somewhere. I'm not sure where yet, and he trains physically. This means not only can he make clones, but he understands what they are used for. This kid is going to be strong sensei, but don't belittle him about it. Just watch over him, please. Anyways, I'll return when I can, for now I'm hot on Orochimaru's tail and I think I've found where he is, after being gone for so many years he's finally resurfaced. I'm also close to finding the sound village Jiraiya said to the Kage who just nodded. The Kage noticed Naruto starting to stir. He shooed away Jiraiya who quickly and silently left. Hiruzen then spoke up, Naruto-kun welcome back Hiruzen said as he saw the boy fully woke up. What happened? 
Where am I? He asked, not too sure of what happened. Naruto, what I am about to tell you right now must not leave this room. I didn't want to tell you until you were ready, but in order to explain what happened I must tell you. The old man said with a sad look. Naruto, as you have been taught, the Yandame Hokage defeated the Kyuubi in battle years 11 years ago on your birthday. That's not exactly what happened. He sealed the Kyuubi inside of a baby child because a bijou can't be killed by any mortal man. That baby was you, Naruto. He entrusted you to buy the Kyuubi's jailer, the old man. Said as Naruto's eyes widened. What the hell happened? How could I have lost control? Hinata. Is Hinatakin okay? Naruto asked very worriedly. Yes, she is fine. She was taken away before the fighting started. But the real question is what happened. Hinata-san said you were having a nightmare earlier and whatever it was caused so much mental trauma that you forcefully ripped out some of the Kyuubi's chakra for a short period and attacked four Umbu. Now you aren't in any trouble, but Naruto, what happened in your dream? I, I can't remember. All I remember was seeing Sasuke, and then I was so angry. So very angry. Naruto said as his voice got distant. I see. Now I didn't tell Hinata-san about your little problem because it is an S-rank secret and I don't want anyone in your generation to know about it unless you were the one to tell them. Unfortunately, most of the older generation hold a grudge against you because the civilians don't know the difference between a seal and a kunai and think you are the reincarnation of the QB itself. I am so very sorry, Naruto. The old man said as a tear escaped his eye. It's okay, Gigi. I don't blame you for anything Naruto said before hugging the old man. Do you think it would be possible for me to learn seals? Naruto asked unexpectedly and surprisingly the Kage. Knowing who your parents were, I'm surprised you haven't asked sooner. Yes, you may, Naruto, -san. and before you ask, I'm sorry, but I can't tell you yet who your parents are. I do promise to tell you eventually. The old man said, promising the boy. How long have I been out for? Naruto asked as he looked outside to see dark. Just a few hours. I'm not sure how much of the Kyuubi's chakra you pulled, but it put a heavy strain on your body. I will find out eventually, but in the meantime, go back to sleep. You have school tomorrow, the Kage said as Naruto just nodded and did as he said. Hiruzen turned around and left as soon as Naruto was asleep and headed to the hospital, dispelling his clone. His umbu were either still asleep or still in surgery. He quickly got to the hospital himself and went to the umbu who wasn't in surgery. As soon as he got to the room, he noticed it was Bear who was unconscious, and so he took a seat while waiting for a medic to show up. It wasn't long before said medic walked in. Hokajesima, he said with a slight bow. So how is Bear? The Kage asked. The man walked around before grabbing the clipboard and quickly looked over it. Besides a few broken bones and a slight concussion, nothing. He should be in the hospital for about a week and should be conscious tonight sometime, if not tomorrow morning. He said, Thank you. You may go. I will watch over him as there are some questions I need to ask him when he wakes up. The aging Kage said to the younger doctor who just bowed and left. It wasn't long before Bear began to wake up. He quickly got a hold of his surroundings and noticed he was in the hospital. He looked over to see his lord sitting there reading his Aika Aika books. Greetings Hokajesim of Bear said getting the old man's attention. Ah uh, I see you're awake Bear San. How are you feeling? He asked him. Quite fine now besides my chest hurting somewhat the man replied. That'll go away eventually but in the meantime explain what happened after you restrained Naratosan the Kage said. Well, as soon as my squad and I showed up, we noticed a young Hyuga girl, and so we quickly got her out of the situation while the rest of my squad went to hold down the young boy. But as soon as the girl's chakra disappeared from our senses, the young Jinchuriki went berserk and quickly unleashed two tails worth of the Kyuubi's chakra while still asleep and attacked my men, almost instantly destroying the forest. He sent out a giant gust of visible wind that hit me straight on as I went to protect my squad before I was blasted back I don't know how far and I instantly lost consciousness. The captain said looking down. Before the Kage could say anything Bear spoke back up, how is my squad exactly? Ox, 
Cat and Squirrel will never be ninja again, but they will live. The Kage said to the young captain before him. He noticed the anger that quickly went through Bear before he settled down. And the Jinchuriki? He asked. He has been subdued and is fine now thanks to the efforts of your team and Jiraiya who was luckily nearby no one else was hurt at all Firuzen answered. At least the people are okay, but now it will be harder for him now that everyone felt that chakra come out even if just a little. The Umbu said feeling slightly sorry for the young child. I know, but if I know Naruto this won't slow him down even the slightest no he will just be motivated to become even stronger. Hiruzen said, and that made the Umbu smile behind his mask slightly. That boy will become something special that's for sure, Bear said as Hiruzen just nodded agreeing with him. Indeed he will I just hope to be around to see the hero he becomes. Hiruzen said softly confusing the Umbu slightly. Naruto slept peacefully in his bed having a sweet dream of ramen. But that was soon interrupted by his alarm going off. The boy lazily smashed his clock with his fist before sitting up to stretch slash yawn. As soon as he finished he got up and lazily had a clone go make him breakfast while he went to go shower. Twenty minutes later Naruto got out of the shower to smell pancakes, bacon, and eggs. He quickly got dressed into his usual attire. He missed wearing his old jumpsuit and was happy to have found the same one in the village, the one from Shippuden. He ran to the table dispelling his clone that already had a plate of food made that it made for its own self. He happily ate his food before leaving a clone to clean up the mess. Naruto quickly left and locked his apartment making a clone to go and read up more on seals, even though he was. Good with seals that was only advanced stuff. He wanted to do things right so he was having the clone go through all the basics to fill in the gaps in his memory that way he could be more proficient than anyone else. Then he went to the rooftops and started to take off towards the academy. It didn't take him too much time to get there even though he was still almost late. The boy didn't care though he loved to take his time because life needed to be worth living so why not take your time and enjoy things. He got to the academy and then walked straight up the wall and climbed in through the window. Sasuke saw him and was surprised to see this but just ignored it. Naruto went and sat next to the boy enjoying the silence the two had and pulled out his copy of The Tale of the Utterly Gutsy Shinobi and started to read it. Sasuke noticed Naruto once again reading his book. This no longer surprised the younger Uchiha as Naruto had been reading and re-reading this book for a while. Sasuke just turned his head back forward and continued to brood in silence. Even though he wouldn't admit it, he was still curious about what that book was about and why the blonde boy next to him was so into it. He didn't really understand why Naruto chose to read that book so often and was half tempted to ask to read it sometimes, but decided against it. The only reason he asked was because he couldn't find a copy of it anywhere in the village and wasn't sure if it was really popular or really old. But anyways he liked having Naruto there because he kept quiet and to himself and kept annoying fangirls away from him and he didn't want to mess that up by angering the boy enough to make him leave. So instead he would just sit in silence until class started and go about his day as normal instead. Sasuke would never admit it though but he was also happy that Naruto chose to sit next to him because he saw the boy as a rival ever since their fight years ago where Naruto actually beat him. The fight angered him but also made him strive to get even better. He couldn't believe the Baka beat him and vowed that it would never happen again if he could help it. Plus Naruto kept to himself. He's never once bothered Sasuke nor even talked to him and he liked it. Naruto, like himself, could find peace in the smallest of things like silence. So the two could be together and nothing bad would happen. Iruka entered the classroom not too long and was surprised to see Naruto there reading his book. Okay, everyone quiet down today is an important day Iruka started and noticed everyone started to quiet down. Naruto quirked up an eyebrow but just closed his book and placed it in his back pocket and sat quietly listening to his sensei. Today is the day of the graduation exams. After today we will find out who shall become Jenin, who needs another year at the academy, and who need to just go back to civilian life if this isn't cut out for them. The man said as everyone got excited for the... Day's events that were soon to start. First off is the written test he held out a stack of papers and started to pass them out as Mizuki helped him. 
Naruto saw the test and silently chuckled at how easy it was. He quickly wrote down all the right answers before turning the test over and then taking his book back out to read from where he left off. At this point in his story the main character Naruto was saying his belief, you should give up on trying to make me give up. The antagonist replied, even if you take me down, another assassin will attack the village. As long as we are cursed to live in this world as shinobi, then there cannot be any peace ever. Naruto stared down the man and gave him his own answer, well... I'm going to break that curse one day. If there is such a thing as peace, then somehow I'm going to find it. And I will never stop looking. He said as he stared down the unknown ninja in front of him. The no-named assassin looked up at the man and asked, Who? Who are you? Naruto smiled and said, My name is Naruto. Naruto smiled as he read that but he then noticed everyone else was starting to finish up their own tests so he put the book back up as Iruka started to collect the test. He told Mizuki to start greeting them as he moved on to the next portion which was Jinjutsu. Naruto groaned as this was something he knew he would never be good at. Iruka had all the kids get together in a small area before placing a small C rank Jinjutsu over the class and waited and watched as everyone took their time to get out of it. Naruto wasn't last, but was close to it. As soon as everyone got out of the Jinjutsu, Iruka canceled it and then finished marking everyone's scores down before leading the class back inside. Once inside, Iruka had everyone go back to their seats and said, Now for the Ninjutsu portion of the exam, first is the transformation technique, then the Kawami, and finally the clone Jutsu. Iruka said, we shall start this in alphabetical order so everyone line up starting with last names A.M. and then N.Z. Everyone got in line according to the way Iruka said and the man was surprised because no one had made a fuss today, not even Naruto, surprisingly. Everyone started off doing the transformation jutsu first like Iruka said and again he just copied down everyone's scores silently as he watched everyone do it one at a time. Next came the Kawami, and again most everyone did the Jutsu with ease, and finally the Clone Jutsu. Naruto obviously failed the Clone Jutsu since he has never had the control to do it. He was the only one to fail the Jutsu, which got him laughed out by the rest of the class. Iruka sent everyone into the hallway so himself and his assistant Mizuki could grade everyone and then called people in one at a time so people could find out if they passed or failed. After everything was said and done, Iruka called Naruto into the classroom. I'm sorry, Naruto, but you did not pass, Naruto was. Confused, this time, the only thing he failed was the clone Jutsu. So, Naruto, do you know why you weren't made ninja? Iruka asked the boy who was pretending to be sad. Because my tests are rigged, my chakra is too high to actually use Jutsu that call for little chakra like clone Jutsu and I don't have the control to break Jin Jutsu properly because of my Uzumaki heritage I have an overly large amount of chakra even at such a young age. Naruto said the answer stumping Iruka. Iruka stood there stunned for a moment not even knowing how to retort. He knew all of those things were true but never really thought too much about it. After a few moments he finally said, I'll be honest, I never thought of it like that I'm going to look at your test now and compare it to others and then talk to the Hokage about your condition and see if there's something else you can do, Iruka finally said. Naruto smiled and hugged the man, please hurry then. Naruto said not even caring even though he did have very good chakra control which was only getting better because of Hinata he knew that it still wasn't even good enough for clone Jutsu. But he at least now he could climb trees and water walk after many, many dates with Hinata. As soon as he left Iruka Naruto headed outside and that's when Mizuki approached him. So you failed again, huh? He started. Naruto put back on his sad face, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do now. I've been practicing non-stop for weeks and it's all for naught. Naruto said. Well I do know another way for you to pass. The man was cut off by Naruto. It's okay, I talked with Iruka, and due to some circumstances, he's going to talk to Hokajiji for me to see if there's a different test I can do. The boy said, Oh, you did? Okay, then Naruto, never mind then. Son of a bitch. Now what will I do? Mizuki thought to himself angrily. 
Naruto smiled before putting up the ram seal and using the Shenshin to get away from the man and O back to his apartment. Once inside, Naruto sat on his bed and went into his seal to talk to his furry little friend. Hey Karama, Naruto greeted with a smile and back in his original body before the travel. Kitty greeted gruffly. What's wrong? You seem aggravated. Naruto said noticing the ticked off tone the fox was using. Why am I still trapped in this fucking cage? The tailed beast asked a bit pissed he's in it. Because it's not time for you to be unsealed. I am truly sorry, but it's too soon and too many questions would be asked you know that. He said sternly even though he wishes he could set his friend free again. You do raise a point, but that doesn't mean I like it. The fox sighed for a second before continuing, but I guess it can't be helped. What did you need anyways? Well, I was thinking we could try loosening the seal to try getting this body used to your chakra again. The young boy asked with a toothy grin. I don't know. It would be difficult to. Do that including that you don't have that Jiraiya boy with you this time to help you if you do lose control. The fox said as he didn't want his friend to accidentally kill everyone. True and I can't leave behind clones as they'll be destroyed as soon as your chakra takes over Naruto said thinking to himself. Finally he sighed and said, I guess I'll just have to wait for Jiraiya he said before he returned to the real world to look up at the sunset. Naruto stretched and went to make some ramen. But not long there was a knock at the front door. Naruto went to the door and looked through the peephole to see Mizuki. The door opened, Sensei? Naruto asked. Mizuki smiled and said, Hey Naruto, I got good news. Naruto frowned before saying, What is it, Sensei? I talked with Irika and Hokajesima and they told me of a way you can try to test to become a ninja. The idea is kind of outdated though. Mizuki said to the innocent looking boy with a smirk. You have got to be fucking kidding me it's been like a half hour Naruto thought to himself. What is it? You just have to tell me I'll do anything. Naruto said way over exaggerating himself. You need to steal the scroll of sealing and learn one jutsu before midnight tonight Mizuki said trying to hide a smirk. Thinking to himself that this was way too easy. Really? Sounds simple consider it done. Naruto said while mentally sighing. See you tonight then Mizuki said before shunching away. Fucking great Naruto said before taking off he might as well see what new justice he could learn. It didn't take long for the boy to get to the Hokage's office. He got there and saw the man was alone. Naruto quickly broke into the room surprising the Hokage. Naruto then transformed into a hot naked girl knocking the old man unconscious. Naruto sighed at how easy this was and walked over and grabbed the scroll of sealing before leaving. The boy found a clearing far off in the woods and sat down and started to open the scroll seeing what was in here which he didn't notice last time. His eyes lit up when he saw the one jutsu that defines his Uzumaki heritage. The adamantine sealing chains. The same chains his mother had when he met her. He quickly memorized the theory behind it and how to activate it etc. When finished he rolled the seal back up and got to work. Naruto decided he might as well see if he could use the chains, never knew when it might come in hand. Naruto closed his eyes and focused on his chakra, he then imagined it becoming solid like the scroll said. Naruto felt funny as he did this and tried to then force his chakra outside his body while still staying sharp and solid. But nothing happened, Naruto concentrated even harder trying to get it to work, but still nothing happened, so he opened the scroll once more before he facepalmed. The jutsu could only be used with female Uzumaki, and since he wasn't female the jutsu wouldn't work with him. Well that was a waste of five minutes, Ugg might as well relax then Naruto groaned out loud as he sat down. The boy only ended up waiting about an hour before a certain chunin showed up. Naruto what are you doing? Iruka asked freaking out. Naruto smiled softly, what do you mean Iruka? I'm doing what Mizuki said to do. He said he talked with you and GG and that if I wanted to pass I had to steal the scroll and learn a jutsu. Naruto grinned. What are you talking about Naruto? Naruto no one has seen Mizuki since graduation earlier today. 
Erica said confused before he started to piece it together. Fuck Erica's instincts went off as he jumped in front of the boy, Naruto run now. Erica screamed as the man could now sense Mizuki and what he was throwing. Before Naruto could move once again Erika was standing over Naruto shielding the young boy from danger. Naruto's eyes went wide as it was his fault for not being able to protect his brother figure. He knew this was going to happen and like it was fate he did nothing and now Erika was hurt and he seemed worse than last time. Well it seems you found me out huh? Mizuki said with a sadistic grin. Erika pulled out the large shuriken from his back, and it was very painful for him nonetheless, but he retorted quickly, Naruto, get out of here, find Hokajesima, I'll hold off this bastard traitor. He said to the boy. The young orange boy couldn't take this anymore, and quickly performed his best jutsu. Kage Bunshin no jutsu, he muttered. Before anyone could ask what he said, they were suddenly surrounded by a large mass of white smoke, which turned out to be a lot of clones. Get him. Naruto screamed in anger as his clones charged in at the unsuspecting Mizuki. Naruto's clones all rushed the older Chunin with a war cry and started to pummel the man who could barely even defend his own self. The clones, after successfully beating up the man but not actually killing him, dispersed leaving the original with Iruka and a bloody and beaten Mizuki. Mizuki coughed up blood as he lied there withering in pain. He looked up at Naruto with fear and anger in his eyes. Demon he stuttered out. You truly are a fucking demon you QB Brett. He screamed at the boy. Naruto just looked down his face casting an evil look one of a man who's seen and knows pain. In his anger Naruto took out a kunai and walked towards the older Chunin. Iruka was on the ground. He couldn't see what Naruto was doing. Mizuki's eyes widened in fear he rolled over to try and get up and get away. Naruto used that to his advantage and stabbed the man in his spine. That's for Iruka Sensei. He paused before taking it out slowly as the man screamed in pain. Mizuki couldn't move. His body exploded. He never felt pain like this. Naruto kicked him over and he then shoved it into the man's gut still not killing him. And that's for everything else you traitor bastard. Naruto turned around and ran back to Iruka. Sensei are you all? Right? The boy asked worriedly. Iruka looked at Naruto fearfully. He didn't see what happened, but he could hear it. Hell, he could still hear Mizuki groaning in pain. I think so. But we should do something about him. We can't allow him to die. We need to find out why he betrayed the village and who he's working for, Iruka said, trying to stand up, but not being able to. Sit down, Iruka. I'll get help with a clone, Naruto said, as the older man decided to sit back down, not complaining. Not a few minutes later the Umbu showed up with Naruto's clone who decided to disperse right then. The Umbu immediately came to Iruka and Naruto. It didn't take him long to explain what happened and as he talked the Umbu started to heal him. After it was all said and done Iruka gave Naruto his headband again and congratulated him on becoming a genin. Naruto dropped off Iruka at the hospital before running to the Hokage's office. He casually climbed in through the window scarring the old man. Naruto boy you nearly gave me a heart attack don't sneak up on me like that Saratobi said to the boy no longer upset about what happened. Trust me I don't ever want to do that old man. Naruto said smilingly with the grandfather like figure. I see Iruka decided to pass you even if he didn't I would have since you saved his life that would have automatically made you a ninja the Kage said with a slight smile I was really just protecting myself from Mizuki who tried to kill me. Naruto said with his foxy grin. That's still a good thing, Naruto, but I'm sorry. I just want to protect you, but I still failed to do that. But don't worry, I'll make it right again, I promise you, he said to the boy. Maybe he means telling me about my parents when the time comes. I hope I can save you this time, Gigi. Naruto thought to his own self. It's okay, Gigi. I understand you have your reasons. I don't hold anything against you or anyone else for that matter. Naruto said, making the Kage smile slightly. You should get going now, Narutokun. You have a long day tomorrow and have to be up in a few hours. The Kage said to his unofficial grandson. Good night, Gigi, he said before leaving via window. Naruto quickly ran to his place via rooftop, but before he walked in, he sensed a chakra source that was very high. It seemed familiar also, so cautiously Naruto walked in and what he saw made him sweat drop. B. 
What are you doing? Naruto asked the older brother figure. I got tired waiting F.O.U. so I searched and searched and found some food he wrapped horribly. Naruto smiled as did B and the two hugged. It's been too long I'm glad you're back but that doesn't explain how you're here and you also never explained how you remember anything. B sighed and poured the ramen he made into a bowl before sitting down. Well it's all because of Gyuki. At first I didn't remember anything but he kept talking about the future. Or past or whatever the hell it was and it kept nagging at me and then finally i remembered it all just like that out of nowhere it all came back to me and yeah i remembered took almost eight years but i finally remembered he said answering naruto's question that makes sense i came back on my eighth birthday maybe gyuki had the memories and he was sent back to the day that karama was sealed in me so from that day until my eighth birthday he nagged you because he remembered while you didn't until i returned to my physical body Naruto said as B just nodded and listened to what he was saying, Well it's good to see you again brother, but I have a long day tomorrow and I need my sleep. Tomorrow is the day I officially meet Kakashi as my sensei. So I'll be gone early but should be back around 2, 2.30. I haven't really trained too much so I'm not as strong as I could be but I'm strong enough. I'm at least as strong as I was in the Chunin finals minus the ability to summon toads. Naruto said to his brother Jinchuriki, be not adhering the info, even though he didn't know the boy at that point in time he could gather a good idea, so you're just now becoming a genin then? Good job can't wait to see what you become I'm actually surprised to let me out as he loved to keep me cooped up for my own safety. But I'm surprised you waited so long to do anything, I figured by now you would have done so much more and be a jounin by now or at least a chunin be said to his friend. I didn't want to make too many changes plus I need Sasuke to still be on my team. It was tempting to just change everything, but if I did that then my knowledge of the future would be nulled and useless. But don't worry things will change, Naruto said, holding his fist out to fist bump B. B smiled meeting the fist before jokingly saying, so what's up with all that orange? You look ridiculous. The man said trying not to crack up. What? It's not as bad as it used to be, trust me, this is the same outfit I had when you met me in the future. Sure, I have an orange blanket and orange flames on the wall, but I love orange, damn it. Naruto said to his friend as the man just couldn't hold it in anymore and burst out laughing. Whatever you still look hysterical anyways, go to bed, I'll find the couch when I get tired. Naruto nodded in appreciation and went straight to bed without any reply. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.